Okay, so um, I'm going to show what was uh, new in 20.1 for faceted search. There is an option to sort facets by count, another option to show the total count of rows. Large numbers can be formatted in a compact way. The two bigger enhancements are cascading list of values between facets and conditional facets. Both establish a relationship between the facets, but they work differently and are used for different purposes, which I'll show once I get the smaller features out of the way. So here's a faceted search page using the historical people data set from the Sample Interactive Grids app. The report is a classic report using the cards template. And one of the first new things you may notice is that the, um, it shows the total number of uh, rows in the result set and it's showing uh, 4K instead of the exact number. And, um, and you can also see that compact numbers are, are used over here in, for the facet counts as well. And if you um, select one of the facets, you can see that the, the um, total is updated automatically, the counts are updated automatically, and all this is done uh, declaratively. What um, is a little less obvious is the ordering of the um, facet values. Here the region and the country are in um, alphabetic order because that's the order that the uh, list of values is um, defined in. And, but the category is ordered by um, the counts with the most popular counts showing up at the top. In the previous release, the ordering was fixed most of the time. It was um, ordered by the facet counts, but now you have control over that. And the reason you need um, this control is that sometimes it's easier to find facet values if they are in well-known order. And sometimes it's more interesting to see the more numerous or popular facets at the top. So let's see how these uh, three facets are configured. So um, show uh, sort by top counts is uh, very easy. It's just this uh, one new um, attribute, short, sort by top counts. It can either be on or off. If it's off, it will use whatever order um, is defined in the list of values. And if it's um, on, then the client side will automatically resort when the facet counts change so that the, um, the um, items with the largest facet count are at the top. So we have three new attributes here, um, the show total row count, the total row count label, and uh, compact number threshold. For the show total row count, you can either not have it at all or you can have it added to the current facets area, or you can um, add a div or a span anywhere you like on your page and give an ID, and then you can specify the element ID. And that gives you the ability to put the uh, total row count anywhere on the page that you like. And uh, just a, a note that the that it's actually a selector, so you need to have the, um, the hash sign in front of it. And it works exactly the same as the um, show current facets, where you can choose an element or um, just have it go in the default location. So the uh, compact numbers threshold, it defaults to 10,000 and it specifies the point at which it will um, start using compact numbers. Um, like K or, or M for uh, millions. And it's uh, fully localized using the uh, JET uh, resource files. And, um, but I chose the number one here because my sample data set only has 4,000 some odd uh, records. If I set it to um, nothing, then you'll always see the exact counts of um, of results. Let me show what that looks like. Clear this. So you can see um, that it's, it's uh, no longer using compact numbers. It's showing you the full number, 
but um, importantly, it's using a group separator now to make the numbers more readable. And um, this is uh, automatically formatted on the, the client. This is also uh, locale aware for the group separators. Um, this client side number formatting is currently only being used in uh, faceted search, but um, the APIs are part of a new uh, namespace, Apex Locale. And um, so if you're interested in, in adding any compact or um, nice number formatting uh, to, to the client side, take a look at these APIs, format, compact number, and uh, format number. So the next two features, uh, cascading list of values and conditional facets can be very powerful, but they should be used with care and probably sparingly. Because the main benefit of faceted search is that it puts the user in control of how they explore the multidimensional search space. If compared with uh, hierarchical filtering that guides the user down a specific path to the results by showing and hiding filters, and values based on previous choices made. With faceted search, each facet represents an independent dimension, and the facet values are points along that dimension. Relationships among the facets arise implicitly from the data rather than being implicitly imposed by the filtering controls. For example, it just so happens that um, before the common error, there are no people in the category of sports. There's, but that doesn't mean there's some kind of relationship between category and the year people were born. It just happens to be uh, what's in the data. On the um, contrary, there does exist a, a real relationship between the region and the country. If we look at um, all the countries, we can see there, there are quite a few of them. And so um, the the new um, can, um, cascading facets let you choose uh, a region and then the countries will be um, limited to just those in that region. You can always um, either select or, or search and select a country directly. And then if you do that, because the country can only be in one region, all the other counts of regions go to zero and you just see this one. But um, by selecting a region first, it limits um, the number of choices under the country. So uh, let's take a look at how that's um, configured. Under the country facet, there's um, a new area here called cascading list of values where you specify the parent facet and um, in that case, the uh, country is a cascade of the region. And then you specify the column that's used in the list of values to uh, filter the, the countries by. So if you were to look at this um, uh, shared component definition of, uh, of uh, this list of values, you'll see that it has a region column. So you have to specify the name of that region here. Now, you have an option to make the parent required or not. If you um, make the parent required, let's take a look at what that does. Let me clear this first. Okay, so you notice that um, there's a region facet, then it jumps right to category. There's no country facet being shown. And the require parent means that you have to um, first choose a region, and then you can choose a country. If you then were to uh, clear the region, the uh, country choice goes away as, as well. So it really forces you to, um, to first choose a region and then choose a country. And so in that case, you are imposing a, um, a hierarchical order that the user must do their searching in, which um, 
may or may not be a good thing depending upon your use case. So the last main new um, feature is the conditional facet. And for that, we turn to the familiar EMP table. In this example use case, there is a range facet on the commission, but it only applies um, if your job is salesman. So once I click on salesman, I will see uh, a new, a new um, facet, the commission range, show up. So I can choose one of these. And, um, and now if I, there's also a relationship here. So if I um, get rid of the job facet, the commission facet also goes away. So, um, yeah, let me show how that one's configured. So, um, what was that? That was the commission facet. We have a new, um, a new section here called depending on where you choose. Um, so for the commission facet, I chose that it was dependent upon the job and you have um, this set of, this fixed set of, uh, of conditions and you're limited to, to these, but they're, they're pretty powerful because they have in list and, uh, and uh, equal and not equal. So um, those are primarily what you need when you're dealing with uh, facets, um, which are most often checkboxes. So this is saying that uh, the commission facet depends on the job being equal to salesman, as we've just seen. So um, both of the conditional facets and the cascading list of values establish a relationship between two facets. The difference between them is that conditional facets say that a facet only applies and is only shown when another facet meets a specified condition. Whereas cascading list of values, it's filtering the actual values of the facet based on the selected values of another facet. And for cascade, the facet may be shown or not depending upon the parent required setting. So, um, let me uh, just select some things here. One um, minor new thing is that the facet region supports the clear options in the URL, um, as has been the case for other kinds of reports. And so, um, for example, this button redirects to the same page, but with the uh, reset report clear command set, which you can see in the, um, the new friendly URL syntax here. The RR means reset report. So um, that can be one way either from within the page or when, um, when you have a, a link or button going to a faceted search page, you can um, clear the, the search, uh, clear or reset the results on your way to that page. And the last thing I want to show is, um, is uh, the lazy loading. Let me refresh this page so I can um, show what I mean by that. So the faceted search is, uh, um, supports lazy loading. I'm gonna open the um, console so we can see this more clearly. So this page has, um, it's a region display selector. So um, there's just one page in this application and the um, classic reports don't support lazy loading, so they've already been um, rendered on the page, but the facets uh, regions on these two tabs have not yet rendered and they have not made a request to the server to get the facet counts. As soon as I click on this people tab, you'll see down here in the console that um, it made a fetch to get um, the counts and you saw a little spinner there very quickly. Um, same thing for employees. Now when I click on the employees page again, it's going to now get the facets, um, facet counts. So um, just to, you know, you, you may not often have um, tabs or other hidden facet, faceted search regions on your page. Usually faceted search is like kind of the, the main, a main page all by itself. But um, if you do, it's good to know that uh, it's being efficient in, in how it loads data. That is it.
for, um, oh, one other thing, if you do this, um, you need to make sure that the tabs are truly hidden when the page loads and there's a extra little CSS rule you need. Um, and that's it for faceted search. All right, thank you very much, uh, John. Uh, just a 